Hey guys, as always, uh, thanks for coming to uh, Motorhome Rehab Ranch and Co-op Motor Works. Uh, and today, you know, we've been talking so much about fuel injection and everybody goes to fuel injection. To be honest with you, most of the motorhomes out there don't have fuel injection. Uh, they have carburetors, you know. And to be honest with you, up until about four, maybe five years ago, I was Mr. Quadrajet, man. I like those things. Why? Because I was smarter than that stupid carburetor. I could do stuff with it, you know? Um, but the reality is, okay, carburetors have a problem that it won't overcome. And eventually we're going to have to go to it because the fuel won't mix at ambient or at normal air pressure. It has to be pressurized and then broken up mechanically with an injector. But let, do, do you, we talk so much about that, you want to hear it. Let's talk about how to keep a carburetor going, all right? A fuel injection won't give you more power. It won't give you more torque. Uh, maybe you want to like you more, but it, 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 it was designed to properly mix the, the fuel we have today. That's it. It works quicker because of the way it is. I mean, you can step on it. Uh, turns off the way injectors work they're either skirting or they're not the carburetors sucking all the time the definition of a carburetor is a controlled series of spring-loaded air and fuel leaks you know uh, and that's how it does its job it meters kind of like uh, it's kind of like a Windex bottle you shoot it fast enough it'll keep going but New thing, let's talk about some old things. All right. This is a coach that's in our queue. Uh, it's a very cool coach. It's a 12 pass, Scarlet, kind of pass up a little bit. We built it as a 12 passenger wine tour bus for Upper New York. It's very cool. Got 12 people, you know, they can sit in here and go from uh, winery to winery and start winding out, and, you know, it's very cool. But it, it still has a carburetor. And we're going to take care of that, but let's talk about it. First thing we know, it's a carburetor. Because it has this huge thing here. It's air cleaner. You know, yeah, it's original, but it really wasn't that cool. All right, here's Mr. Carburetor. All right, whenever you go to your carburetor, Check these four bolts right here. Snug them. The reason is in a minute I'm going to show you the, um, the carburetor gasket under here. It's called a thermal gasket. It's real thick. So when you tighten these bolts down, the gasket will compress. The bolts come loose. Did they back out? No. What they did was the, 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 the gasket compressed and now you got to snug these up. So every time you lift the engine cover, snug those four bolts. Not tight. You know, redneck snug. How's that? All right. Uh, next thing is this coach, this carburetor was fitted with an electric choke. Why? Because when I built this engine way years back, we put a fiber gasket set in here, blocked the exhaust crossovers to keep the heat from melting the sucker. You put exhaust crossovers right here, which we did. That disarms the uh, regular choke, the heat riser choke. You can see it's the old case, but they put in a, uh, an electric choke. See, wire here. Okay, so we t swapped it to electric because we have the uh, stainless steel block off plates and we don't have a choke here. All right, another thing that's done, you can see this line here goes to the distributor, this vacuum line. It comes right up here to the front of the carburetor, about halfway up, right there. And this is where the ported vacuum uh, uh, is coming out of the carburetor, and that's what controls the distributor. Never have a Chevy man work on an Oldsmobile. Why? Because a, a, a Oldsmobile is a ported vacuum switch, and the distributor turns backwards. So a you know, Chevy guy, if he doesn't know this, he'll, he'll time it, tune it upside down. Okay? Don't do that. All right? It gets ported vacuum, not constant vacuum. Okay, very, very important. A Chevy gets constant vacuum to the distributor, and then when you gag the maggot and it loses vacuum, it, it retards. This engine, the second you hit the, the accelerator, 
it advances. It pulls the distributor complete. So during the time that it's in idle, it's not advanced at all. The second you touch it, it advances. These are mechanical things. Remember I told you the spring-loaded uh, series of air and fuel leaks? Well, these are some of the things that they built into this carburetor to mechanically make it suck gas and mix it with air. All right, so these things are really, really important. Um, the reason we get a fuel injection is because this will not mix all of the fuel when it, when it mixes together. So when it does that, where does the fuel go? It goes by the rings, goes into the oil, contaminates the oil, thins the oil out, burns the motor up. That's the main reason that we get out of carburetors with the fuel injection because carburetors induce fuel gas into the oil. Now, if you're going to run a carburetor, change your oil every 1,000, 1,500 miles, and you want to have a problem. You want to prove this, go drive 1,000. Look at your oil. It'll be black. Why? Because it's got gas in it. Okay? It's got gas in it. And that's bad, bad, bad for the oil. So, if you're going to run a carburetor, change your oil. Your filter is a Wix uh, 51258. Mm, yeah. So, <clears throat> another problem with the carburetor is that ambient air pressure, so it vapor locks. What's a vapor lock? You're driving along, you stop at a toll booth, and you take off, and it goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Normally, you back off on the gas. It'll catch up, and you'll start going, and then the heat will get away, and then it'll take off. Well, if you have vapor lock, and say you get your you enter the toll plaza and you're a little worried, you know, and it starts to buck and you push the gas harder to try to go, it'll die. Why? Because the fuel got so hot it boiled and it induced air bubbles into the fuel. You say, well, what does that do? If you're running a mechanical fuel pump, how does that mechanical fuel pump know there's six and a half psi of pressure? before it shuts off. How does it know that? I want to know. When it does that, a diaphragm pump has a, has a rod connected to the cam and it, it goes like this. Well, it's not connected. There's a spring on there that when it hits about 6 psi, it doesn't move this anymore. It just moves back and forth and the spring gives up. So in other words, until the fuel pressure in that, that that pump sees goes below six and a half psi, it won't pump. It doesn't know the difference in vapor pressure or fuel pressure. Thing shuts off. Why? Because the pump stopped pumping. Why did it do that? Because it saw six and a half psi pressure. How did it do that? Because it was vapor. It was fuel. It boiled up. Over the years, we've we put electric fuel pump on the front tank to give you a. A uh, little shot, so when it starts doing that, you can push the pump, push the electric pump on, and you can uh, force fuel to it. Uh, that's that's a good one. Uh, the mechanical fuel pump, they make a second one. It's called a three-port pump. In other words, like I said, the original pump starts to flatulate <laughs> when it gets too pressure. The three-port pump has a check valve that this thing keeps pressuring, make, making pressure. But as soon as it is six and a half psi, it shunts it back to the tank. So it's a recycle mechanical fuel pump. Okay, the fuel doesn't stay in the line long enough to get vapor lock because it's always recirculating. So my suggestion, if you're going to continue to run a carburetor, get a three-port mechanical fuel pump. It'll have a quarter-inch takeoff on the top of it. Run it over to the uh, half-inch inlet on the fuel tank and it will return all of the fuel back into the tanks. So with an electric fuel pump as a button you can push and give you fuel pressure and as a mechanical uh, uh, three-port pump it returns it. So you've got as much as you can with a carburetor to, to beat the vapor lock. All right? So doing all these things, I have a carburetor, I love it. I, it works great. It's just that uh, I'm, I'm concerned that my motor, well, it's the original motor. I'm probably going to take it out pretty soon. But uh, uh, I should not drive distances with, uh, with uh, that carburetor on there because it, it could damage the engine. And it would be on yours too. Um, 
Carburetors were made for a different age, made for different fuels, made for different ways we drive. The air's different. Everything's different. So we still run them, right? All right, so look, let's go inside. I want to do a little book learning on this and show you a few little doodads, okay? So let's go do that. Let me put this thing back in. Great. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, class. Everybody sit down. Put the gum away. All right, we're back in the classroom now. And this is, this is a quadrus knot. Yes, that's the uh, nickname. The cuse knot. Why? Because on the bottom, right here, are two uh, holes in the, in the float bowl. And you, you put epoxy on those things to keep them in. If you're a carburetor, you have to pump it and pump it and run the engine to get it started. What's happening is the float bowl's running out of fuel. Now you got to push fuel into it to get it to start again. What that means is it needs to be remanufactured. That's the time, okay? Remember I was talking to you about that gasket. You see this? It's, you can get all kinds of gaskets. You want four holes. All the little vacuum lines here are important. You want a gasket. So the gasket's going to look like that. You can see how thick it is. Why? It's to keep the carburetor away from that hot engine. Okay? So it's very important to do this, even though, yeah, it brings it up a little higher. Got to have this. Right? Wix 330-48. Yeah. This is your filter. And this will clog up first. Because this is the finest filter, it's five microns. Uh, it's the the carburetor people put it in here so they didn't get the carburetor nasty. All right, you got to change this. You got to have one of these extra in your uh, glove box so when this sucker goes out, uh, you can do something. It's got a little rubber seal. You put that in there. There's a spring in there, and you tighten it down. Don't cross thread that. It would be a problem. It'll never, never stop leaking. And there's a little seal in there. Make sure that doesn't fall out. Okay. So we can still run carburetors. We have to make uh, allowances for vapor lock. We got to make allowances for contaminating the engine. Uh, and a carburetor will work the best the first day it's been remanufactured. And it will go down. It doesn't go back up. It goes down. When it starts to leak, in other words, you got to pump it to get it to go or something like that, the carburetor needs to work on it. About 300 bucks to it remanufactured makes it just, just like this. And we can keep running our quadrus knots, um, but don't forget fuel injection. Okay? So if you have any other questions about running your carburetor or anything like that, let me know. If you want to talk about the uh, vapor lock issue and how to solve those, call me. We'll talk about it. We're here to talk to you about how to help you do your motorhome, how to do things with it. We're buried. We've got two years worth of work here. We can't do anything. So I'm here. I want to help you do this to your coach. All right? So let's run a carburetor. See you later, man, next time.